Hello, in this video I'll talk you through building a particle system from scratch. In the book I mentioned that you can use particle examples and may rarely need to set up a particle system from scratch, um, but in this video we'll do just that because uh, knowing how a basic particle system is put together, it'll help you understand the individual components and with practice you can efficiently whip up your own customized particle system and understand exactly what each component does. Um, and this in turn will help you troubleshoot systems in the future and solve particle problems. So in this example I have a few layers with some blurred foreground elements and there's a hive in the middle of the scene, that's the focus of the scene, and then there's some more blurred elements in the background. So I want to use a particle system to create a swarm of bees around this hive. Now to start building the swarm, I'll go to the module library and open the particles tab. Uh, there are some foundation components as mentioned in the book that are required by every particle system, so let's drag those into the network. Uh, the first thing is the particle system composite, so I'll drag the system composite in. And just like your main scene composite, this takes all of the individual particle system actions um, or behavioural attributes of the particle system. Uh, the next uh, main foundation module is the baker. Um, after taking all the information from the system composite above it, the baker is responsible for running the simulation. So uh, it has a handful of base controls for the system like maximum particles, simulation quality, randomness and movement um, and a few others. So uh, I'll plug that in and you can see the colour coding there indicates what this is plugged into. Um, and finally the visualizer, which uh, funnels the whole system down into a single image on each frame and it's got two peg import, input ports uh, by which we can move, rotate and scale an entire particle system as one object. So now those foundation modules are in the scene we can plug it into the main scene composite in front of the tree layer because we want the particles to happen on the tree. Alright now the first um, behavioural aspect of the system um, is the sprite emitter and this will take artwork that we do and assign them to particles. So I'll take that out of the um, particle tab in the module library and just plug it into the system composite. And like I said this is an action or behavioural module and there are all sorts of other actions and behavioural modules that will plug into this system composite but for this particular example we're only going to use a sprite emitter we're not going to use many others uh, alright so a sprite emitter if we scrub the timeline we see nothing's happening um, because we have a sprite emitter but we don't have any sprites and we don't have a region from which the sprites are emitted so I'm going to pl plug in a 3D region into the sprite emitter and this defines an area, I'll press shift F11 to show that, uh, this defines an area from which the particles are emitted. So I'll open that, uh, the layer properties for this. I'm going to put the minimum size up to 1.5 just so that it's you know, emitting from an area about the size of the hive and the maximum area that they're emitting from is like out away from the hive. So we'll have what looks like um, these wasps or bees or something uh, flying around the hive, just buzzing around an active hive. Uh, so now I want to just move this up, so I'm going to add a, a peg to the region. So I will control P, and add a peg, turn off my animate mode, it's already off, and move that up so it's just covering the hive. And once again I'll scrub the timeline and nothing's happening. So to make something appear on the screen we need to go to the uh, sprite emitter and we'll on the rendering uh, tab of this we're going to use render as dot. It's currently set to use particle type, we want to render as dots. So now if we scrub the timeline there's a hundred particles being emitted on every frame. Uh, and I know that because in the sprite emitter properties on the generation tab we have number of particles 100 and there's a hundred percent probability that 100 particles would, will be generated on every frame. So that means when we scrub the timeline on every frame there's 100 extra particles and we don't want that. We want there to be 100 maybe, which you know could be a good sized hive, um, but we don't want any more to appear. 
we, we just want that 100 to stay there and kind of hang around. So in the sprite emitter layer, I'm going to drop down this uh, little plus icon here and there's a trigger value and if you roll out this data view in the timeline uh, you'll see that the trigger value is currently set to 1 and 1 is on and 0 is off so it's on all the time so what do we need to do we need to turn it off uh, as soon as it has generated 100 so the way to do that I'm going to uh, set a keyframe on the first frame by pressing the plus here then go to the second frame and immediately we'll turn the particle system off by setting it to zero. So now if we scrub the timeline, the there's an initial generate generating of 100 particles, but we scrub the timeline and it's turned off. So that's all well and good, but uh, there's still no movement. And what I would like to do rather than put in uh, mathematical movement in the simulation, I would like to animate the movement. And to do that, I need to add a sprite to the sprite emitter. So I'm going to add a drawing layer, control R, and I'm going to call this uh, insect, whether it's a bee or a wasp or a gnat or some nameless bug. Click OK, and I'm going to plug that into the sprite, uh, uh, sprite input of the sprite emitter. Uh, and now I can animate this. So I'll go to the insect layer and in the drawing view I'm going to choose black, that should be fine. Um, I'm going to now animate this bug and I'll, I'll just do a dot. So uh, I'll turn on the onion skin. And what I want to do is animate a cycle. So I'll have him coming up and do a bit of a loop or something. Uh, so I'll just do that very simply. Oops. Oops. Just a very, very simple bug. So he goes around, down. And back up to near where he started. So now I've got, what's that, 26 frames of this bug animation so it goes around and you when you when it comes time to do your own artwork and animation for a sprite you put in all the detail you want into this sprite you've got all the all the freedom to do um, animation on as many frames as you like so now that is in place if we go back to the camera view you can still we're still rendering as dots so i need to set the uh, sprite emitter the rendering tab we want to use age. So now if we scrub the timeline, you can see that we're getting animation. And the, the problem that you can see here is that they're all doing the exact same thing, uh, which is totally not what a swarm does. So that, that's one problem. And the next problem is that they disappear after 26 frames. And what we want to do is set this to cycle. So again, in the layer properties under cycling, I'm going to choose normal cycle. And we had 26 frames in the cycle, so I'll add 26 into that field below, right there. And now if we scrub the timeline all the way to the end of the scene, you can see this uh, bug animation loops. So I'll just play that. Wow, very well coordinated swarm this is. So in order to randomize this, um, we need to play with a few more settings. If I go across to the generation tab, we, you see here that we've got uh, age a section with age at birth and age at birth standard deviation. So the age is uh, the age at birth is the frame number uh, that it should be on when the particle is created. So at the moment, the age at birth is is starting at frame one when the particle is created. So if we put that on say eleven then all the particles go to, par to frame 11 when they are created. Uh, so that's fine. We've got 26. So let's say we'll go right to the middle, so uh, 13. But we want to deviate from that. In order to randomize this, we want to deviate from the age at birth. So we'll set the standard deviation, let's say to, well, if, let's say to 12. So it'll deviate by anywhere up to 12 frames from that. So if I say to 12, we can now see we have a very, very nice organic random looking 
uh, simulation. And if I play that to the end of the scene, you can see that it just looks very lovely and it loops uh, nicely. And that's about it for making a particle system that looks like a swarm of bees. The only other thing you might like to do, besides better bees of course, um, is to move, rotate or scale the system. Um, and as mentioned earlier, we can do that by adding a peg uh, to the visualizer in the, into the left port here. Um, and so now the swarm, using that peg, the swarm can be moved around for added interest or you know to follow a character or rotate or anything you like. So experiment with all the values um, in the settings you've seen so far and have fun.